Today we're going to talk about completing the square uh, to vertex form, but before we get into completing the square to vertex form, I want to review a little bit, um, not really from yesterday, but from our previous lesson. And uh, first of all, y equals 6 times the quantity of x plus 1 squared minus 4 is in vertex form. And just a quick reminder that vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. What's the turning point, which is also known as the vertex of this problem? Almost. It is negative 1, negative 4. And remember, it's not the best way to explain it, but I think that it helps students who are first learning this, is that we change the sign on the number inside the parentheses, and we keep the sign on the number on the outside of the parentheses. Something that I just want to talk about a little bit more because I really taught it more with the, a calculated perspective, and I want to look at it um, more from the generic perspective, is to identify whether something is a maximum or a minimum value. We, we look at A. So if A is greater than 0, our value is going to be a minimum. We're going to have a minimum value. The turning point is going to be the lowest point in the graph. And if A is less than 0, we're going to have a maximum. The turning point, also known as the vertex, is going to be the highest point on the graph. So when we look back up here and it says Y equals A times that parentheses plus K, in this case A is 6. So is 6 greater than 0 or is it less than 0? Greater than 0. So what that means for us is that our turning point is going to be a minimum. If you happen to have a graphing calculator and you type it in, you'll see that your picture looks that it opens up in that direction. The next part is the axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry is the equation of x equals h. And here's h. Here is k. Again, for some of you who have a calculator, it's that dotted line that goes right through the middle of the quadratic, cutting it in half so that if we fold that quadratic, the right half lands on the left half. We can look up at our vertex there, and the axis of symmetry is an equation which we Algebra 2 teachers will be picky about. In this case, it's going to be x equals negative 1. And finally, the y-intercept here. Again, we've been looking at it strictly from the graphing calculator perspective. And for those of you who have a graphing calculator, that's fine. But what if we don't have a graphing calculator? And what we do if we don't have a graphing calculator is we're going to put 0 back into the equation wherever we see x. This is going to be y equals 6 times 0 plus 1 squared minus 4. Well, order of operations says we do the parentheses first, so 0 plus 1 is 1 squared minus 4. Next says we do exponents in the order of operations list, parentheses exponents. So this is y equals 6 times 1 minus 4. Multiplication, 6 times 1 is 6 minus 4. So our y-intercept in this case is 0, 2. And we haven't seen that done in that particular way before. Again, what we started with here is we started with vertex form. And we had two formats. We had vertex form. And we actually started our unit with standard form, which is down here at the bottom of um, my page here, the ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. That's the standard form. And what we want to do is we want to convert this problem back into standard form. And the way that we're going to do that 
is we're going to rewrite this equation as y equals 6 times x plus 1 times x plus 1 minus 4. What I can recommend in this particular case here is that you multiply these two together first. It's not the only way to do the problem. It's just what I'm going to recommend for you. And when we multiply, that's going to be the double distributive property or the FOIL property. And we get x squared plus 1x plus 1x plus 1. And that's still multiplied here by the 6. And we also have that minus 4 outside of there. We can condense this down, or we can combine like terms. If we add the 1x and the 1x together, so now we have 6 times x squared plus 2x plus 1 times 4. And we're going to multiply everything in that equation by 6. Everything in that parentheses, I should say, by 6. So this is going to be 6x squared plus 12x plus 1. Nope, plus 6. Don't forget to multiply the 1 by the 6. Minus 4. And finally, we can put this back into standard form when we combine any last like terms here, which are going to be this 6 and this 4. We get y equals 6x squared plus 12x plus 2. A little trick that might be helpful for you is go into your calculator and type in y equals the 6 times the quantity of x plus 1 squared minus 4. And then on y2, type in 6x squared plus 12x plus 2. And if you only see one picture on your calculator, you have done the problem correctly. So as you can see, writing a quadratic function in standard form from vertex form is relatively simple. I recognize that simple for some people is never going to happen in math. But what we're really going to focus our time on for most of the rest of this week is how do we convert from standard form into vertex form? And the method that we're going to use is going to be a method that's familiar to us. If you look up here at the title, it says writing the quadratic equation in vertex form using completing the square. And that's what we're going to use. We're going to use our knowledge of completing the square to help write this in vertex form. We use this method, the completing the square method, to solve quadratics, but now we're going to apply it in a slightly different way. The steps, for the most part, are going to look fairly familiar to us. It says rewrite the equation in the form c plus y equals x squared plus bx. So in reality, what that means for us is that we're going to put the variables on one side. We're going to put the constant on the other. In order to use completing the square, the leading coefficient, the number in front of the x squared term, still must be 1. If it isn't, we're going to have to factor out the leading coefficient and complete the square as usual. Our remaining steps are going to be fairly familiar for us. We're going to complete the square by adding b divided by 2 quantity squared to each side of the equation. We're going to factor the trinomial, which then will condense, I like to say. And finally, we're going to solve for y. It's going to look a slight bit different from what we did when we were actually solving the problem. When we're solving this problem, we're going to be getting it y equals vertex form. And by the way, 
Just a reminder again, that vertex form is y equals a times x minus h y squared plus k. That's how we want to finish our problem. We want our problem, when we're using this completing the square, to write our equation into that format from the standard form. And here's how it works. We are going to put the variables on one side, the constants on the other. We're going to move the 6 over to the other side. What we do? We get 6 plus y, and if you prefer, you can write y plus 6 equals x squared plus 6x. But we're completing the square. So to complete the square, we need to create a perfect square trinomial, so we're going to add something to the right side. Whatever we add to the right side, we need to add to the left side. And to figure out what we're going to add, I, I didn't leave enough space here, but we're going to take 6 divided by 2, b divided by 2, which is 3, and square. So we're going to add 3 squared, which is 9 here, and 9 there. Which leads us to our next step, which is step 4, factor in the trinomial. Well, 9 plus 6 is 15, plus y. And over here, here's the factoring. It's going to be x plus 3, x plus 3. We need to have the same factors, because it needs to be a perfect square trinomial. The 3 came from over here to the right, and a little bit kind of at the top of the screen. What's in that parentheses? That 3. So we get 15 plus y equals x plus 3 squared. And now we're going to subtract the 15 from the other side. Now we're at the solve for y step, which is the last step. We subtract 15 on both sides. We're not going to get a number like we did when we were working with um, solving. So we get y equals x plus 3 quantity squared minus 15. There we've seen it with the steps beside us. Let's flip over our paper and try a couple more. And then we're going to identify some other pieces of information. The nice thing about these problems here on the back is that they're in standard form. So we've got an A and we've got a B and we've got a C that can help us with our y-intercept when we get there. Or maybe you even start with the y-intercept. But our steps are going to be put the constant in on the other side. You can write y plus 20, you can write 20 plus y. Equals x squared minus 8x. Variables on one side, constants on the other. But we're going to complete the square, so we need to add something to the right side. And if we add something to the right side, we're going to add something to the left side. And when we come over here, what we're going to do is we're going to take negative 8 divided by 2, which is negative 4 squared. B divided by 2. That's not changing. It didn't change from the last unit to this unit. Negative 4 squared is 16. If we add 16 to the right side, we need to add 16 to the left. Over here on the left side, 16 plus 20 is 36 plus y. And we're factoring. So we're at the factor step. But if you take the time to write that blue step off to the far right of the screen here, we see that what's in the parentheses is minus 4, so this is going to be x minus 4, x minus 4. And maybe you don't even write that step, because you know the next step is going to be to condense it down. So we get 36 plus y equals x minus 4 
square. And then we're going to subtract 36 from both sides. And we end up with y. I'll pull that screen back down so you can see a little bit more. y equals x minus 4 y squared minus 36. We just convert it from standard form to vertex form. So that's what's going to go in our first blank. That is our equation. That's vertex form. y equals x minus 4 squared minus squared minus 36. From there, what is our turning point? Again, also referred to sometimes as the vertex. For the turning point. Remember, when we're first learning it, maybe the best way for us to say is the number inside the parentheses, we're going to change the sign. The number outside the parentheses is going to stay the same. It's going to be 4, negative 36. And the last part is we want to find the y-intercept of this. But go back to what we started our unit with, which is the fact that in this problem, a is 1, and b is negative 8, and c is negative 20. And remember that the y-intercept is 0, c. We have that on the front page of our paper. So in this particular case, it's going to be 0, negative 20. Problem number two, slight bit different for us because there's a two in front of the x squared. And as I flip back to the front page, we are, we're going to start the same way. We're going to put the variables on one side, the constants on the other. But step two says, in order to use completing the square, the leading coefficient has to be one. If it isn't, Factor out the leading coefficient and complete the square as usual. So this is going to look a little bit weird. All the rest of the steps are the same. It's going to be a little bit weird to start. But when we do this, once again, we're going to move the 16 over to the other side. And we have negative 16 plus y. If you wrote y minus 16, it's fine. Equals 2x squared plus 8x. But because there's a number in front of the x squared term, what we have to do is we have to factor that out. Just the number. We're not factoring the greatest common factor. Get negative 16 plus y equals 2. And then we're going to have x squared, 2x squared divided by 2, plus 4x, 8x divided by 2, plus something. And maybe that's not so weird. Until, remember, we've got to add something over here to the other side as well. But look at what's happening. That plus something is inside the parentheses. And ultimately what's happening is that the 2 is going to be multiplied by x squared. And the 2 is going to be multiplied by the 4x. So 2 is going to be multiplied by whatever we put over here in this blank spot in our parentheses to the right. So this is going to be 2 times whatever we put in that blank spot. That's the weird part. The 2 is coming from the coefficient in front of the parentheses over there on the right side. The process is still the same. How do we figure out what goes in that? We're going to take b divided by 2 and square it. So 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4. And if we add 4 over here to the right, we can put the 4 over there on the left. And 
and we can go through the process here of the factoring. <coughs> 2 times 4, by the way, is 8 minus 16 plus y. Simplifying up that left side a little bit. And over here on the right is where we're going to factor. And if we take the time to write that blue step off to the side of the screen, this is going to be x plus 2 and x plus 2. Well, we can condense it down. 8 minus 16 is negative 8 plus y. And we have x plus 2 squared. And to finish, we want to solve for y and add 8 to the side. We end up with y plus 2 times x plus 2 squared plus 8. That's our vertex form. That's what's going to go on the top blank here. y equals 2 times x plus 2 quantity squared plus 8. What's our turning point, which is also sometimes known as the vertex? It's going to be negative 2, 8. And over here, when we started this problem, we could have started by saying a equals 2 and b equals 8 and c equals 16 because it was in standard form. And our y-intercept is 0c, which is 0, 16. As we look at the last one here, I'm not sure that I'm going to finish it, but I do want to get just a little bit of this done. It says y equals x squared, negative x squared plus 6x minus 1. When we start this off, we're still going to add 1 to both sides. And we get 1 plus y equals negative, got to write it right, negative x squared plus 6x. Well, just like the last problem, even though there's no number written in front of that x squared term, we could have had a number written in front of that x squared term. It could have been negative 1. There's that negative there. We don't want to overlook that. So this is 1 plus y equals factoring out the negative 1. And this becomes x squared minus 6x. Because negative x squared divided by negative 1 is positive x squared. Positive 6x divided by negative 1 is negative 6x. And then we're going to add something here. And when we add something over here on the other side, it's not going to be just that something. It's going to be negative 1 times that something. And to figure out what that something is, it's negative 6b divided by 2, which is negative 3 squared. And negative 3 squared is 9. And over here there it's 9. So you can go ahead and finish that one on your own. That gets most of the tricky part done for us. And work on those three practice problems that go along with our notes. Well,